Bom, Mr. Stevie's tall tale toys. Now, apologies for the delay in this broadcast. I've been very busy boy today. Been doing multiple YouTube interviews with um, Toying Around and Ryan Speaks Geek. And then when I came to do this, my blooming microphone wasn't working. So it's been a little bit difficult. But here, we're going to make an effort to carry on the discussion about my Star Wars collection. Last episode, episode four, we appropriately got through my Star Wars section. And now we're going to turn our minds to The Empire Strikes Back. We've got 10 minutes, so settle down, get comfortable, and Alexa, let's go live. You have 10 minutes to talk, boys. Very, very good. Right, let's go straight in. Boop. There. So, we spoke about Star Wars previously. Empire Strikes Back, this is where I really got into Star Wars. This is where I got my Falcon, I got my Atat, I was starting to buy figures. All the kids at school were really excited about Star Wars and Empire. I went and saw Empire as a double bill with Star Wars. I was so excited about going. If I remember correctly, I kept going to the toilet and in the end we were late for it. So I managed to come in at the end of the trench run from Star Wars, but I did see all of Empire and I loved it. Hello, Ryan. Have you finally finished? Uh, so Empire was great. And this is really where Kenner started upping the details. I mean, goodness me. First of all, they got rid of telescopic lightsabers and they brought in Excuse me, Master Yoda. They bought in actual lightsabers that were detachable. Now, I don't know about you, which do you prefer? As a kid, I kind of preferred the detachable ones because then I could change them and I could make my own stories and have Han hold a lightsaber. I know, I know, blasphemous. But as a kid, playing with having characters able to take different lightsabers... I thought was brilliant. Oh, I say different lightsabers. One lightsaber, wasn't it? It was there was a yellow one and I believe there's a blue one. So the detailing got really good. We were introduced to this incredible new character, Yoda, which soft goods wise was a masterpiece. Had a belt, had a cane, had the snake. I actually want the orange snake. I don't know why I got the brown one. I like the orange one better. But if you look back. And what was happening, the soft goods in Star Wars was only the Jawa cape, which was kind of a little bit clunky, if I'm honest. I've dropped his gun, I'll never find that now. But in Empire, you had Yoda's soft goods. You had Zuckus' soft goods. I know it's Forlom, but... that No, sorry, no. Forlom's soft goods, I know it's Zuckus. That was cool as well. Like, the shiny stuff on there is amazing. Ugnaughton, all those kind of things. So the details were really stepped up in Empire. They also introduced really cool weapons and guns, big blasters like Bosk's gun. I always, Bosk's gun, I always used to really love. Difficult to hold, and I dare not touch it. One thing I did notice, Bosk, he's the most leechiest of the Star Wars figures, certainly from Empire, have you noticed? Leeching is when the oil that's made to use the plastic starts to seep out. He has always been so sticky, but one of my favorite, ah, oh, there you go. One of my favorite costumes. You will all know that that was originally a Doctor Who costume, I'm sure. I'm just picking up all my guns because I know what's gonna happen. I don't wanna lose them all. So my favorite figure from Empire, if I'm honest, what do you reckon? You think it's Luke? Do you think it's Yoda? I did actually on Yoda, Remember when I spoke about in my last episode about how I used to like sticking my finger in Hammerhead's neck? I had a similar kind of fetish for Yoda because he had pointy ears. I used to like pinching them really tight so they would leave little divots in my thumb, my finger and thumb. I used to, I don't know why, I was odd, wasn't I, as a kid? I used to love doing that. But my favourite figure was the Imperial Snowtrooper. And I'll tell you why. As a kid, I like the look, I like the design. Now, obviously this uh, elusive skirt would come off in about two seconds. So I never had that, throw that away. But my Snowtrooper figure, well, unlike this one, that's got really tight, crisp joints, my Snowtrooper was really loose. So whenever you'd stand him up, he'd stand up for about 
10 seconds. And then he would flop forward. I can't even bend him, he's so tight. He would flop forward. And then he would, arms would flop forward and he would fall off whatever he was on. So as an eight, nine year old, there was nothing I liked more than putting my snow trooper on the edge of a wall, on my windowsill at the top of the house and watching him fall down to his death. And as a kid, I used to, used to do the, uh, used to do the, ah, as you would. And this, that was my favorite figure. I absolutely adored it. And interestingly enough, when I grew up, which I did eventually, and I started working at Hasbro, I'm gonna spin you around now because you haven't seen me yet. Here I am, look, I'm representing Lucasfilm, British Stormtrooper. Uh, that probably sounded good on the microphone. But when I joined the Star Wars team in 2014, 2015, I had this idea that I've always wanted to do, which was create a trooper that screamed when it fell. Because if you remember, I used to do that as a little kid to my snow trooper. And when I had the chance, I said, hey, team, let's make a Wilhelm screaming stormtrooper. And here he is. This was the Interactech trooper. Don't blame me for the name. But essentially, there's an accelerometer inside, which when I turn him on. Reporting for duty, Commander. Knows how you're playing with it. So, for example, if you put a weapon in his hand, he knows he's holding the gun. And when you mimic shooting, he does that. Next time. that. When you hold him upside down, a little help here. he gets a little bit upset. And the pièce de résistance, I right, hope you can hear it. <laughs> the Wilhelm screaming. This is... Probably my favorite toy that I've ever been involved with because it was a dream come true of a little eight-year-old that I would get a screaming stormtrooper. Oh, he didn't scream on that one. So, Interactive Trooper, I don't know if you're aware of it, came out in like... The enemy is on the move. All right, came out in like 2016, uh, part of Rogue One, I would believe. Anyway, dreams come true. Ah! So, Empire Strikes Back, let me take you back to that. Fabulous line. Also introduced, I have to say, probably the most lost accessory in Star Wars history. The Cloud Car Pilot Com. Do you have this? <laughs> He's still yakking away. Do you have this? Did, oh, oh, crap. Did you have it? I've lost it. Oh, it's down here. Here we go. It's all right. But yeah, this was by far the most difficult accessory that I ever got. And now all his guns are falling off. Ah! So Empire Strikes Back. There we go. Any thoughts on that? What are we covered? Yes. So the Empire is fabulous. Let me just try and gather all my guns. Put Luke back up there. Standing by. He's turning down. And we're going to take you over to Jedi. Let's start talking about Jedi. So I'm going to open up my case. We gotta get you a little bit higher. We'll come to Power of the Force next time. So let's move you on up. Moving on up to Jedi. Now, this is where detailing from Kenner really came into its own. I mean, seriously. The detailing on, on Jedi, I thought was absolutely incredible. And I still think it's pretty incredible. The, the, the soft goods game on Squidhead, I still call him Squidhead. It was absolutely sublime. Got that brushed Trico as the official name. So if you see this fabric, it's most, it's usually Trico, it's called. This is a brushed one. And you've got like Bib Fortuna with like, almost like a tailored coat. It's utterly, utterly brilliant. I was, I was so excited for Return of the Jedi, but my favorite figure in Jedi, can you guess? I had a couple, I really liked Akbar from the aesthetics. But I have to say, Wike, 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 was, I was blown away, even as a kid, by its detail. That face sculpt. And the way he held his kind of like vibro spear or whatever that is, in terms of resting like that. I just thought he was the coolest figure ever. Now, there were a lot of, it was almost a, a shelf warmer, to be honest with you, because you could always find a Wike. And in fact, toys, um, Return of the Jedi, I would say, probably introduced the first peg warmers 
if I'm being honest. Let's have a look. Peg warming would be definitely a Maydean and definitely prune face. You can find those in stores without difficulty. Another innovation, I guess, that Jedi introduced, because I don't think we had that up until then. No, we didn't. I'm just looking. It was the removable helmet. I remember getting Lando for Christmas. That must have been 83. Where was I? Yeah, I was still in Dedham. I, was still, I still lived in Dedham in, in England. I remember getting him for Christmas. And just the excitement of being able to put the helmet on him, I thought was a wicked, wicked playpan. Only to be beaten by, of course... <laughs> Boosh, Leia Boosh, because you know I didn't want to. I didn't want to. I'm sorry to say I didn't want a girl figure to play with. But like now, suddenly, Boosh, oh, look at that. That was almost in time. Was the evil, wicked bounty hunter. So there we go. So we covered some Empire. We made a start on Jedi. I'll spin you around. Say hello. I got quite a lot of guns to pick up and weaponry and little communicators from Cloud Car Pilot. So wish me luck that I can pick all that up. We'll come back this time next week and we're going to get into Power of the Force. We're getting, going to get into those last 17. That's when it gets really interesting. And then after that, I'm going to take you on a journey through my customs and the figures that I was actually involved in doing when I joined the Star Wars team. So until then, have a lovely week and bugger off.